Good afternoon, students, and welcome back to yet another class of English grammar. If you remember, in our last class, we did kinds of sentences where we saw what are decorative sentences, what are interrogative sentences, imperative sentences, and exclamatory sentences. I hope you understood how to identify those kind of sentences. In today's class, we will continue with kinds of sentences, but in today's class, we will see what is a simple sentence, what is a compound sentence, and what is a complex sentence. Now, a simple sentence, we know that a sentence is a group of words which makes complete sense. This group of words has to be arranged in order. So there is an order of the arrangement of the words and the group of words must make complete sense. Now that's a sentence. In a simple sentence, you will find that you have one subject and a predicate. The subject is the naming part, the person who does the action. The predicate is the doing part. So in a simple sentence, we have one subject and one predicate and the sentence must have complete sense. Now, for example, I am happy. I over here is your subject. Am is my verb. Am happy is the predicate. So this is a simple sentence. Even though it's got just three words, it gives me complete sense. She is learning to swim. She, again, the subject is learning my verb and is learning to swim is my predicate. So these two sentences have just one subject I, one subject she and one predicate. Am happy is the predicate in the first sentence, is learning to swim is the predicate in the second sentence. Now let's see what is a compound sentence. In a compound sentence, you have two independent clauses, or we can even say that we have two sentences. And these independent clauses are joined by coordinating conjunctions. Now, we have already studied what are conjunctions. Conjunctions are joining words. And the coordinating conjunction will join two independent clauses. Now. I have written in brief over here, fanboys. Fanboys stand for the coordinating conjunction for and, okay? And then N for, nor, B for, but, O for, or, okay? Y for yet, S for, so. So if you remember fanboys, you will be able to remember the conjunctions. And whenever you see these conjunctions, then immediately you will know that it is a compound sentence. Now, we are saying independent clause. A clause is also a part of a sentence, but when it can stand on its own, when it can give me complete meaning on its own, I call it an independent clause. Now, I like tea. I over here is the subject. Like is my verb. I like tea. Now, this group of words, I like tea, gives me complete sense. Here you have a conjunction, but. She likes coffee. Again, when you take this group of words, she is the subject, likes is the verb, likes coffee predicate. This group of words, she likes coffee, makes complete sense. So we say that this is an independent clause this is also an independent clause. It's got its subject, it's got its predicate, it's got its subject, it's got its predicate. And these two independent clauses are being joined by the conjunction, but because here we see contrast. One likes tea, the other one likes coffee. In the next sentence, she was tired. She is my subject. Was is my verb. Was tired predicate making complete sense. She went off to sleep. She, again, subject, went off verb, 
went off to sleep predicate. Here also you find that we have a subject predicate. This group of words giving me complete sense. This group of words also giving me complete sense. Therefore again, two independent clauses joined by so. In other words, the result. What was the result of her being tired? She went off to sleep. Therefore you will see that in a simple sentence, one subject, one predicate only. In a compound subject, you will find two independent clauses, or you can even say that you have two independent sentences. This is alone making sense. This group alone makes sense. I want to join it into one long sentence, and I use the coordinating conjunctions. And you know that conjunctions are joining words. So here, but and so are joining these two clauses to give me one long sentence and that is called a compound sentence. Now, in a complex sentence, you will have one independent clause. Now, you've already seen the independent clause. The independent clause will stand on its own. It makes complete sense. And it has a dependent clause. Now, a dependent clause, meaning it will not make complete sense without the independent clause. It needs the independent clause to complete the meaning of the sentence. It may have, both the groups of words will have subjects, will have predicates, but you will find that one is depending on the other. And these are joined by the subordinating conjunctions. And the subordinating conjunctions are also called as the depending conjunctions because they depend on another sentence. She went out for a walk. Now, that's my independent clause because she over here is my subject. Went out for a walk is my predicate. This group of words makes complete sense. Now, let's see this part. Although it was raining, it again can be the subject, was raining the verb. But here I have although. Although it was raining, I find that this group does not give me complete sense unless I have the dependent, the independent clause. So this is called the independent clause, whereas here you have the dependent clause and you have a subordinating conjunction. The train had left before I reached the station. Again, we have the train had left. Now when did the train leave? We are not very sure. But now when I have this before, I know that before I reach the station. Now I reach the station gives me complete sense. But the train had left. When I say the train had left, you'll ask me when. So here you are, you come to know that before. Before I reach the station, the train had left. So therefore, simple sentence, subject and a predicate. In a compound sentence, two independent clauses joined by the coordinating conjunctions. In a complex sentence, you will have an independent clause and a dependent clause, whereby you will be joining them by subordinating conjunctions. And some of the subordinating conjunctions are although, before, when, where, why. Okay, so that's the class for today. I hope you have understood. We will be doing some exercises for further practice. Till then, take care.